Hello everyone. Uh, I am Mukesh Doble. I am a professor emeritus from Department of Biotechnology, IIT Madras. So I have a B.Tech, M.Tech degrees uh, in Chemical Engineering from IIT Madras. Then um, I worked uh, in industry for a long time, almost 23 years in General Electric as well as uh, in Imperial Chemical Industries before I joined uh, IIT in the biotechnology department. That's about 17 years back. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, something very interesting uh, where we are looking at a combination of a drug with the phytochemical or plant extract and see how it's able to enhance the activity of the drug. Okay, so we call this as a new therapeutic strategy. Uh, my lab has been working on this uh, type of studies uh, for a long time in the area of uh, diabetes, in the area of uh, antimicrobials and also in tuberculosis. So I'm going to cover about two topics, one related to diabetes and the other one related to tuberculosis, where we have looked at uh, combining phytochemicals or uh, plant extracts with the commercial drugs and see how uh, the combination is able to um, enhance the activity at the drug. Uh, so that's why we call it a new therapeutic strategy. Uh, so if you look at uh, the current uh, drugs, we all admit that, that um, they have side effects. Uh, they could have toxicity, short-term toxicity, long-term toxicity. Um, so as you know, some inflammatory drugs have uh, cardiovascular issues. Some anti-cancer drugs have some cytotoxicity, um, liver toxicity. So that's one problem. Then uh, you also have development of drug resistance. Uh, drug resistance means the same antibiotics doesn't seem to work uh, for after some time. So they have to come up, come up with new antibiotics, especially for bacterial. Tuberculosis, there are very serious problem about drug resistance and extremely drug resistance, tuberculosis uh, bacteria. Then in, even in the area of cancer, uh, resistance has become a problem. Uh, initially, the chemotherapy works very well. And after some time, um, the same drugs don't seem to be acting on certain cancerous cells. So the drug resistance um, leads to the development of newer antibiotics or newer drugs. So the bacteria over a long period of time or uh, cells over a long period of time start developing uh, resistance. So that's a problem. Uh, most of the drugs are discovered for single target. So uh, that could be an advantage, but also a big disadvantage because some of these diseases are multifactorial. Um, so you cannot say that because of this, you get the disease, but uh, there could be many reasons. For example, diabetes, it's a multifactorial disease. So many, many reasons are attributed to the uh, leading towards these diabetes, insulin resistance and so on. So this single target business is also not very much light, even in drug discovery. Uh, nowadays, they are looking at multiple targets. Uh, then the drugs always focuses on the diseased part, but it doesn't look at the body as a whole. But actually, um, it's uh, very funny to think about uh, uh, treating a cardiovascular issue, but uh, there could be connection between the heart and the kidney, for example, because even diuretic problems can lead to cardiovascular. Uh, nowadays, uh, they say diabetes in the long run can lead to cardiovascular. So the body is a total system. So we need to look at treating the entire system rather than just looking at uh, one diseased part. So that doesn't make sense nowadays. Okay, so these are some issues in the current drugs. Uh, so uh, people have been looking at medicinal plants. It's not just uh, today. Uh, for thousands of years, uh, medicinal plants, med herbs, um, natural products have been looked at. As you know, Indian Ayurveda, Yunani, most of the Southeast Asian medicinal systems are based on medicinal plants. Many, many countries have a very rich um, plant kingdom. So they have been using it for a very long time. 85% of the world population use herbs. Even the Western countries nowadays, they look at supplements, complementary medicines, uh, using of herbs and natural products and so on, even the West and such. Uh, there are 21,000 medicinal plants listed by WHO, WHO, and 2,500 species are found in India, and India is called Botanical Garden of the World because there are so many um, thousands of medicinal plants being used for a very, very long time um, for treating very complex disease to right up to very simple, maybe a wound dressing. 
okay because the these medicinal plants herbs the the extracts have multiple targets they focus on several targets they have less side effects and they cytoprotect and they have good protection towards the liver and other organs um they are known to have good radical scavenging activity so they seem to have the total system in perspective and they are able to address the total system in perspective okay so uh, so even if you look at today's medicine uh, they have the structures of those uh, some of those drugs are based on medicinal plants as such actually okay so medicinal plants uh, has been used for uh, thousands of years um, in indian ayurvedic system unani and also traditional in uh, southeast asian countries like uh, china and other countries um so as i said the medicinal plants have multiple targets less side effects they have the cytoprotecting effect they also have the radical scavenging effect so they look at the system as a whole and uh, if you look at uh, some of the uh, structures of uh, drugs even starting from aspirin taxol metformin which is used for diabetes taxol which is used for uh, certain types of cancer quinine which is used malaria um the the structures are all derived from medicinal plants maybe little changes in the structure has been done but the parent structure has come from the uh, medicinal plant uh, cue itself okay so uh, there is a very close relation even otherwise between the medicinal plants and the commercial drugs um so we looked at uh, something called combination therapy that means uh, the drugs which are fast acting which are very potent um and we look at plant extracts or um phytochemicals that is pure components from the plants which have uh, cytoprotecting properties multi targeting properties so if we combine them can we get a synergistic advantage that's the whole strategy of uh, Uh, the research which we started 15 years or 17 years back so combination of uh, drug with the plant extract by doing this uh, we may get potentiating activity so we may be able to reduce the amount of drug um, so if we are going to reduce the amount of drug we are talking about uh, using less amount of drug so may be reduced to side effects reduced to toxicity and so on um, so that is what is all about it's a synergistic combination of uh, the drug with the plant extract or phytochemical so it's like a, um instead of attacking the target with the uh, two or three different drugs can we look at other targets for the same disease okay maybe by doing that when you attack multiple targets you may get a synergistic advantage when compared to uh, attacking only a single drug target um so that the principle of combination therapy is uh, nothing but the synergy uh, can enhance activity they can enhance the action they can reduce toxicity even bioavailability maybe uh, the availability of the drug can be enhanced by adding a natural product because natural product may be um, protecting the drug from degradation or natural product may help the drug to cross the uh, gastrointestinal barrier maybe the uh, the synergy can reduce side effects so two compounds with different mechanisms so the the the, the entire point is the drug and the natural product should be uh, working on different uh, targets different mechanisms of action okay um so we may be able to lower the dose together rather than one which is used at higher dose which can lead to less side effects um than the monotherapy that's the entire strategy we're looking at so how do we measure synergy there are different ways of measuring synergy so what is this uh, um if x plus y is equal to x plus y that means x could be the drug y could be your natural product so the effect if we add natural product and the drug is the same then we call it additive or indifferent but if x plus y is greater than x and y together that means if i combine natural product or a plant product with the drug i get a better effect okay that synergy and you can also have an antagonistic effect also that is x plus y could be less than x plus y added together for example if you see um, if you take a protein rich diet and we take medicine sometimes uh, proteins could absorb the drug and we get a reduced effect okay uh, that's that's been uh, seen that's why sometimes doctor says take uh, with empty stomach take after 2 hours medicine and so on that's because of uh, this type of uh, 
reduced effect which can happen the the food um, which we take or the herbs which we take could uh, degrade uh, some drug that's a possibility so if synergy is there antagonism is um, or inhibition could also be there okay um, there is something called isobologram okay that's called isobologram that's one way of measuring synergy okay so um, look at this graph so if i am using a drug okay that's the x axis so if i need say 5 micromole to get some effect okay maybe 5 micromole is required to reduce uh, uh, the bacteria from some value 10 power 6 to 10 power 1 say for example or it 5 micromole is reduce, required to reduce the glucose concentration in the blood whereas if i use the phytochemical alone i may require say for 15 micromole just to phytochemical alone so uh, these these two star points are used only alone but when i use these combinations okay when i use these combinations um at say this combination, if I am using say one micromole of the drug and four micromole of the phytochemical, I get the same effect. So this point is much, much lower than this point, this line, which we call the line of additive. Then we can call these as synergy. So I'm able to reduce the drug quite a lot. I'm able to re reduce the phytochemical, but still get the same effect. Okay, so that's called a synergy. How it happens, we have to see that later, but how it happens, we'll see that later, but uh, this is called synergy. Uh, similarly, you can also have antagonism also. You may require much, much more um, of the drug and the phytochemical to achieve the same effect uh, because of other reasons. Maybe the phytochemical is degrading the drug or the phytochemical is absorbing the drug and not, not allowing it to pass through the GI or the phytochemical, maybe forming some complex so the drug loses its action, something like that but we are interested more in this okay but if the point lies on this then we call this additive this is the line of additivity uh, so if the point lies below that means with the lesser amount of drug than what is required pure with the lesser amount of phytochemical than what is required pure i'm able to achieve the same effect we call this synergy so this isobolagram we use quite a lot to see whether a relationship whether a combination is forming a synergy or not Okay, so we use that and there is another um, numerical number okay that's called combination index so what we do is we calculate something called combination index or ci and um, so ca ica could be the concentration of a when used alone icb could be the concentration of the b that could be the phytochemical when used alone alone to get an effect but when i use them together then the concentration is ca and cb then what i do is i take this ratio i take this ratio then i add up um if the number comes out to be one obviously mathematically you can see then we call it uh, okay, one additive but if the number comes out to be much less than uh, one um as you can see then we call this synergy so if the number comes out to be one that means i require same concentration to achieve the effect in combination or alone that is one is additive and if it is less than one we call it synergy so you can as i said also have antagonistic with where we are talking about greater than one so we use this isobolagram and combination index to find out whether a combination of drug and a phytochemical or plant extract is synergistic in nature or it's additive in nature and antagonistic in nature okay so we use this thing. Uh, so the synergy like i said can be protecting the active drug from degradation from enzymes because uh, you are talking about stomach and then uh, gi there are a lot of enzymes then it goes to the bloodstream then there are a lot of enzymes so the uh, the plant could be helping um, or the phytochemical could be helping the degradation preventing it may be facilitating the transport that means especially crossing the GI, crossing the cell membrane, and so on. It may be overcoming multi-drug resistance. For example, uh, if uh, uh, certain bacterial systems get drug resistance because of something called efflux pumps, these efflux pumps throw out whatever drug comes in. So the plant uh, extract or phytochemical may be uh, inhibiting that efflux pump. So the drug may be going inside and uh, doing its job. 
So there could be efflux pump inhibitors, or it could be overcoming uh, the reasons for multi-track. It may be providing some signals to the host cell, result in highest efficacy. So it may be acting in a different way, or it may be stimulating the immune system. As you know, plant products, herbs, um, always has been used for um, thousands of years to improve immune system. Um, so it may be helping the immune system so the drug at very low doses also is able to work on it actually. So, so many reasons um, which may lead to this uh, particular synergistic effect. Actually. So my, as I said, my lab has been working on uh, antibiotics, uh, synergy with phytochemicals, tuberculosis with uh, uh, plant extracts, synergy, even anti-diabetic uh, drugs with phytochemicals. So I am going to talk about two examples, one related to anti-diabetic, one, rela one related to tuberculosis. Okay. Uh, maybe sometimes I may go faster depending upon the um, availability of the time. Okay. Um, diabetes, we looked at, uh, as you know, the chemical uh, the synthetic drugs, one is called the metformin. Um, okay, then another one is called a thazodilinone. These, called, yeah, these are big class of drugs, THZ. They are called, um, then we also looked at pioglitazone. These are the commercial drugs we looked at. And um, we looked at large number of phytochemicals. Okay, um, they are called phenyl propanoids. That means they have a certain... Uh, phenyl groups with the OH groups. That means they have a um, benzene ring with OH, which are called the phenolic compounds. As you know, phenolic compounds, there, are, um, there is a lot of interest nowadays in the use of phenolic compounds in your food um, because they protect, they have cytoprotecting activity, they have reactive oxygen species uh, scavenging activity, they have uh, um, radical scavenging activity. So we looked at that. The other example I'm going to talk about is the Tuberculosis, where the drugs are isoniacide, isoniacide and rifampicin. These are very common uh, tuberculosis drugs. We looked at many plant extracts, okay, plants which are available in uh, South Indian uh, setups. Actually. Okay, look, well, let's look at diabetes. As you all know, diabetes um, is uh, the fastest growing non communicable disease. So it's, it's not because of uh, uh, bacteria or uh, microorganism, okay, and India is going to be having a serious problem in the next uh, 10 to 15 years. Um, WHO predicts that almost 300 million uh, people will be affected by in 2020, okay, on, in the diabetes. Um, so we looked at large number of uh, uh, phytochemicals, that means uh, phytochemicals extracted from plant, and we call it phenylpropanoids. Uh, and these are phenyl propanoids. As I said, uh, they have the uh, phenolic uh, groups in their structure: chlorogenic acid, vanillic acid, ferulic acid, elagic acid, eugenol. So all these phytochemicals, and as you know, and um, they are found in apples, eggplant, tomatoes, blueberries, potatoes, strawberries, red currants, uh, citrus fruits. Elagic acid is found in pomegranate. Eugenol is found in cloud, then berberine. So, large number of uh, phytochemicals, phenyl propanoids, as, as we call it, these are found quite a lot in many of these uh, fruits and foods which we take, especially like chlorogenic acid is found in large number of, and ferulic acid is found quite a lot in nuts, actually. And eugenol is found in uh, um, cloud, oil, and so on. Okay, ferulic acid is found in uh, some of this citrus fruits, allergic acid is found in pomegranate. So we looked at uh, how they interact with some of these commercial drugs, which I showed you. Um, one is a metformin, another is a THZ, and the other one is pioglitazone, and how they are able to potentiate the glucose uptake by cells, actually. So we looked at ferulic acid and eugenol to start with, with oral antidiabetic. Ferulic acid uh, is very good bioavailable. They have monophenolics. They are called dietary flavonoids. They are found in grain, bran, fruits, citrus fruits, banana, orange juice, eggplants. They have hepatotoxicity, um, protective hepatotoxicity. Uh, they are used in some countries for anti-inflammatory. In um, China, it is used for cardiovascular and cerebrovascular. This is the structure of ferulic acid. As I said, they are phenolic type of compounds. Phenyl propanoids, as we call it. So they have a benzene ring with that. Then the 
Other one is eugenol. Eugenol is again a phenyl propanol. You can see benzene ring with the OH. Uh, it's extracted from essential oils, clove oil, nutmeg, cinnamon, bay leaf. It's used in dentistry. It's got uh, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic properties. Very rapidly absorbed. Okay and it metabolized after oral administration within 24 hours. So uh, we looked at how uh, they help in glucose uptake in cells. Uh, these cells are muscle cells, L6 myotubes. tubes. Um, so what we do is um, we use a, a, a different type of glucose which doesn't get degraded so that we can monitor it. Unlike the normal glucose, that's why we call it uh, 2DG, dioxy glucose, this is called. And then um, we uh, monitor the glucose at take by these L6 cells um, with ferulic acid and eugenol and of course with the two commercial drugs metformin and THZ. So we use two different concentrations and then we see how the um, these glucose gets taken in actually as a function of concentration. As you can see with the less some less amount of commercial drugs the glucose uptake reaches a maximum by the cells and of course we need a much higher concentration of the natural product to achieve the maximum glucose uptake. Okay, so um, one conclusion is that the uh, commercial drugs act better than the natural products individually. Okay, please remember this is done individually. Okay, then we look at time dependent study. Again, <coughs> again with about four to five hours, we see a very good uh, uh, maxima in glucose uptake. Okay, when we combine it together, we see something interesting. Uh, this is with the pure commercial drug, the left graph uh, with the 10 micromole of THZ, we get certain glucose uptake. So I need about 25 micromole of eugenol. So, of course, eugenol is not as effective of the commercial drug. So I need a 25, whereas I require 10. But when I combine them together, we see something very interesting. As you can see here, this point, uh, at this point, I'm able to reduce the <coughs> commercial drug tremendously from 10 almost to 2.5 by adding this eugenol. So I get a very interesting synergistic interaction <coughs> between this uh, uh, commercial drug and eugenol. Okay, because uh, the, as I showed you, if you remember the isobologram, uh, the points are much lower than this line of additive. Same thing with metformin. If I use metformin alone, I require 15 micromole. If I use eugenol alone, I require 20. But when I use them together, um, I'm able to reduce the amount of metformin by it's come down to um, almost one third of it. Okay, And um, eugenol concentration is also reduced. So by combining them, I'm able to reduce the commercial drug by uh, three times, in some cases here, five times actually. So if you look at the combination index, which I talked about, uh, these are the additive points, that is it's 1.0, and we are able to reduce it to 0.65. If it is 1, then we call it uh, an additive. If it is greater than 1, we call it um, antagonistic. So it's quite low, 0.65. So <coughs> by both the methods, both by uh, the isobologram method and the combination index method, we see there is a synergistic interaction. Ferulic acid. If you do the same thing with ferulic acid and both the commercial drugs, metformin and uh, THZ, again we see a good synergy here. Now we are able to reduce the amount of uh, uh, THZ to almost, uh, okay, from uh, 10, it's come down to almost the half. Okay, similarly with metformin also, we are able to reduce quite a lot <coughs> by adding this ferulic acid here. So we get uh, this point and these points as synergistic. And also, if you look at the combination index, uh, we see that the CI comes down to very low value, 0 0.58, actually. So almost we are able to reduce by half the amount of commercial drug by adding ferulic acid. Okay, we see a synergy. Uh, so we wanted to know how the uh, synergistic interaction happens. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, if the commercial drug has certain uh, pathway, and if the uh, natural product or phytochemical has a different pathway, we will generally get a synergistic interaction. So if we look at uh, the glucose uptake in cells, GLUT4 plays a very important role, uh, which helps to take in the glucose that's found in the blood into the cells. Okay, so GLUT4 is generally inside and in the presence of insulin, 
uh, what happens is GLUT4 gets translocated. It's called translocation and takes in the um, glucose into the cells. So there are two pathways which we talk about. Uh, one is called the PI3K pathway and another one is called PPR, PPAR gamma pathway. So we wanted to know um, how the commercial drugs like metformin and THZ operate uh, in translocating GLUT4 and how these ferulic acid and eugenol act. So we do something called a gene study. We look at the genes in these genes, GLUT4 gene, PA3K gene and PPR gamma gene um, with ferulic acid, with the commercial drugs and with eugenol and see how the um, genes get upregulated. Okay, they go up. Okay, we call it uh, uh, PCR. So if you look at the GLUT4 gene, we look at the PPR, a, PPAR gamma, and we look at the PI3K. Okay, so both ferulic acid, um, all of them improve GLUT4, of course, because the GLUT4 has to get translocated to take in your uh, glucose into. Um, PI3K gets enhanced when you add ferulic acid and eugenol, okay? Whereas the commercial drugs are enhancing PPR gamma. So it's very clear the commercial drugs go through the PPAR gamma and the uh, phytochemicals go through the PA3K, 3K, and they both affect the GLUT4. Uh, so if you look at, um, okay, we'll come down to the thing again. And then, um, as you know, there are a lot of secondary complications which happen um, because of diabetes. Okay, the fatty acids get enhanced. There are uh, so many other uh, enzymes get enhanced, like inflammatory and um, genes get enhanced. Okay, then even it can lead to cancer and so on. So we looked at large number of uh, these genes to see um, how the uh, commercial drugs as well as the um, the phytochemicals affect actually. Okay, uh, so we found that um, the ferulic acid and eugenol go through the PI3K pathway as I showed you before, okay, the PI3K pathway, the, the, the phytochemicals, whereas the um, commercial drugs go through the PPR gamma pathway, okay? So the commercial drugs go through the PPR gamma pathway, the ferulic acid and eugenol go through the PI3K pathway, and both of them affect GLUT4. So as um, I mentioned earlier, that um, multiple targets being uh, looked at by this combination leads to enhancement of uh, the um, activity of the drug. So we get a synergy. So uh, the phytochemicals go through one pathway, commercial drugs go through another pathway. So the GLUT4, which is involved in the uh, in the taking, taking in of uh, your glucose um, is also enhanced. So the ferulic acid and eugenol are able to bring in a synergistic interaction with the commercial drug. They are able to even reduce the amount of commercial drugs by a factor of three or even five when they are used in combination. Okay, then what we did was we other looked at other phytochemicals with drugs. Okay, as you know, chlorogenic acid. The structure of chlorogenic acid, again, it's found quite a lot in nuts. Okay. Then vanillic acid, it's found in strawberries. Um, then this is called berberin. Uh, it's for, found in uh, certain fruits. Um, we looked at them and uh, we see, again, a chlorogenic acid when used alone uh, takes much higher, needs much higher concentration when compared to metformin and THZ, which are the commercial drugs. Uh, you need much higher concentration. That's okay uh, because commercial drugs are designed to take in glucose unlike the natural products. Okay. But uh, when we use them in together, we see the real synergy happening. So if you look at metformin alone, I require 15 micromole. If I look at uh, chlorogenic acid alone, I will require 20 micromole. But uh, when I use them together, even with about five micromole of metformin and uh, about four uh, or five micromole of the chlorogenic acid, I get the same effect. That means glucose uptake uh, in uh, cells. Okay, so that's uh, um, big synergy. So we see synergistic at these points. Um, similarly, with the other drug, THZ, again, we are able to find that uh, individually uh, they require certain concentration, but together, we may be able to reduce the concentration quite a lot by factor of three um, or even four to achieve the same effect of glucose uptake. Okay. Uh, so again, we looked at the mechanisms, um, the GLUT4, which is involved in the glucose uh, intake by the cells, 
and then we've looked at the PPR, gamma, and PA3K pathway. So we see that uh, the chlorogenic acid, ferulic acid, and the natural products um, act in different pathways, uh, and they are able to achieve the glucose uptake in, in combination with the commercial drug. And uh, so we are able to get a very good synergy. Okay, then we looked at um, allergic acid, which is found quite a lot in your pomegranates, okay, uh, with the, a dark drug called pyoglutazone. This is a natural, this is a commercial drug. Uh, maybe uh, some of the pyoglutazones family have been uh, <clears throat> banned in Western countries. It was banned for some time in India and again brought back because the advantages are quite a lot. The only problem with pyoglutazone is the toxicity. Um, so then we use allergic acid with the uh, pyoglutazone, again we see a synergistic uh, interaction. We are able to reduce the concentration of pyoglutazone um, when compared to its uh, pure concentration required. So when we reduce the concentration, we will be able to reduce the toxicity as well. Okay, so um, that's an interesting point. So we wanted to look at <clears throat> how the uh, combinations work, uh, why the combinations work. Okay, so there is uh, GLUT4 is there which takes in the cells, then we have the PPR gamma there, okay? Both of them, the commercial drug like pyclodazone and the allergic acid affect the GLUT4. But um, here, when we look at the PPR gamma, pyoglutazone doesn't affect, that is, these uh, these uh, bars, whereas allergic acid seem to affect the uh, PPR gamma expression. That means it's able to produce more of the uh, PPR gamma when compared to pyoglutazone. Okay, so uh, we are able to come up with the mechanism uh, of uh, how the allergic acid is able to help um, in enhancing the glucose uptake in combination with pyoglutazone. So allergic acid produces a lot of PPR gamma and the drug pyoglutazone um, goes and binds to them and able to activate it and thereby they are able to up improve the glucose uptake. So pyoglutazone alone doesn't increase the amount of PPR gamma, you need allergic acid to increase the amount of PPR gamma, but pyoglutazone goes and binds to PPR gamma and able to um, enhance its activity. Okay, So the enhanced activity helps in the glucose uptake by the, by the cells. Okay, so we see again a interesting synergistic interaction uh, between allergic acid and the pyoglutazone. So each of them acting differently. Uh, but there are some problems, of course. Uh, if you look at allergic acid in pyoglutazone, um, at pH 3, for example, pH 3 is the stomach pH, um, allergic acid has a very poor uh, permeability, whereas at um, pyoglutazone has good permeability. Okay, At pH 7.4, that is in the bio blood region, uh, pyoglutazone has poor permeability, allergic acid has good. So this problem, how do we address? So when we take combinations, how do we administer uh, as such as a formulation so that it's given as a oral dose and it's absorbed into the stomach and goes into the bloodstream and able to reach the tar target site. So with that, we need to think about it. So that part is still needs to be looked at actually. Uh, so we started doing some animal studies on um, diabetes induced rats okay so we induced uh, diabetes into the rats okay so the rats were given uh, sts z so what sts z does is it uh, kills the beta cells so it reduces the amount of uh, uh, insulin produced so the rats end up having diabetes and then we give different combinations uh, of um, our phytochemical with the with the drug and drug alone, phytochemical alone, put together combinations and then see how the glucose uptake. So that is the diabetes study. So they were done on Mr. Rats um, studies. Okay, they were, uh, the beta cells were killed so that they um, produce less amount of insulin. Uh, so a large number, this is a very detailed study. We had almost 14 groups. So six rats per group, you can imagine because we have to have control, we have to have a positive control, negative control, diabetes without treatment, diabetes with treatment, um, treatment with drugs alone, individual drugs, treatment with, we studied on ferulic acid, so ferulic acid alone, and then combinations um, with the drugs and le lesser amount. So it was a very detailed study. 
Um, so we see, I hope you can see that when you have drugs alone, uh, THZ and ferulic acid alone, um, we, we are, uh, the, the glucose level in the blood goes to 145, uh, THZ metformin alone, we have 127, 139 mg per deciliter. But when you start combining them, uh, we get 112. Uh, it is not only the glucose, but you can see the amount of uh, um, drug that's used, uh, 2.5. And again, uh, for metformin also, we are able to reduce the amount of drug tremendously. So it's not only able to reduce the glucose level to the acceptable range, but the amount of uh, metformin used, the amount of uh, THZ used also has come down considerably. Okay, uh, here you can see 50 micro, uh, milligram per kg body weight metformin, here 10 milligram per kg body weight THZ, but we are able to bring down quite a lot here. As you can see here, THZ and as well as metformin, um, considerable reduction. And um, lipids, because uh, lipids, uh, cholesterol, LDL, HDL um, has to be monitored. As, as you know, that uh, these also get affected because of diabetes. So we looked at uh, individual um, drugs, the ferulic acid alone at two concentrations, then combinations of ferulic acid with the THZ. A combination of ferulic acid with metformin at two different concentrations. Again, we see there is an improvement in the um, concentration of the lipids as well as the triglycerides as well as the um, high density and low density lipoproteins. Um, then again, uh, we need to look at the liver and kidney. We did that study also and we see that uh, the combinations have better cytoprotective activity than the individual drugs or individual and the most important point you need to see the left column um, that we are able to reduce the amount of drug, the amount commercial drugs considerably, but still able to get the same effect. Okay, so we looked at the histopathology um, to see the islets formation, especially in the liver region, because the liver uh, is destroyed when we uh, when you add STSZ, and then um, when we give this natural product. And we see how the liver islets uh, keep improving, both in size as well as the number. Okay, so we need to do histopathology and we can even quantify that, the number of islets as well as the islet size increase. Uh, we see that um, um, combinations are able to improve the islet number, okay, 13 and 10, when compared to just the commercial drug alone. So combinations, um, but we are using less number of less amount of metformin when compared to pure metformin by almost four times and similarly we are able to reduce the THZ by almost four times from 10 milligram to 2.5 milligram so by using one fourth the amount of commercial drugs we improve the islet number much better and we are also able to improve the islet grade also much better okay so the combination seemed to work very well um, when compared to individual drug as well as so uh, ferulic acid, eugenol, show dose and time-dependent glucose uptake. Those show synergy with both uh, the commercial drugs like THZ and metformin. Uh, they are able to reduce, uh, decrease the enzyme responsible for lipid synthesis, so reduce complications. So an animal studies, when we did, we see that ferulic acid decreases hyperglycemia um, quite, a, quite well, and um, it's able to reduce the amount of commercial drugs. It's able to improve the lipid profile, liver function and kidney function. The ferulic acid also improves the islet number. That means the number of uh, islets in the kidney. That means it's slowly uh, improving uh, the functions of uh, the islets. It's able to improve the liver considerably. So this is what we found. Um, in our study with the uh, use of uh, phytochemicals, natural products in combination with uh, drugs um, like uh, metformin, THZ, pioglitazone. So the animal studies also look very, very, very promising. And uh, you just require almost one fourth the amount of uh, ferulic acid to achieve effect, which is better than using pure 
commercial drug like a THZ or metformin on diabetes induced rat. It's not only the hyperglycemia, that is glucose concentration in the blood, but also the other functions, the, the liver functions, um, the lipid profiles, the kidney functions also. Because as you know, um, diabetes leads to many complications which involves liver, kidney, lipids. And the natural product, as I mentioned in the very beginning, um, always um, look at cytoprotective general uh, system, systemic improvements. Okay, so we have looked at uh, the first example related to use of uh, phytochemicals with the commercial drugs. Let's look at uh, the second example of uh, <coughs> uh, tuberculosis with uh, some um, plant extracts. Okay, use of plant extracts, uh, combination with isonicide, okay, and rifampicin. Okay, so <clears throat> we looked at three different uh, plant extracts. Uh, one is called acacia, babul, um, other one is called bilbum, this is the picture. The third one is called um, licorice, uh, this is uh, glabra. And the fourth one is a pure chemical which is obtained from all these three. Uh, interestingly, all these plants have this particular molecule, this is called deep pinetol. So we looked at combinations of uh, tuberculosis drug like uh, isodicide and rifampicin in combination with these plant extracts and pure drug also later individually. And as you know, um, all these plants are found in South, East, South Indian and they are used very regularly for treating um, many diseases, especially in the village setup. Okay, so uh, look at uh, the, the isobologram. Uh, individual compounds, uh, we require certain concentrations individually. Um, if, you if you use the commercial drug and if you lose, use the plant extract, uh, we require this. This is called the line of additivity. Uh, but together, we get some very syner interesting synergy here. As you can see, much, much lower than this line of additivity. With all these plants, as well as with this pure compound called D-pinetol, um, which is found in all these um, plant extracts. Um, so we are able to reduce the amount of commercial drug considerably. The y-axis uh, is the concentration of the commercial drug. Uh, okay, you can see here clearly and uh, the x-axis is the concentration of the plant extract. So we can reduce considerably the concentration of the commercial drug by adding these uh, plant extracts. Okay, so we find a synergy here and also the combination index also shows a very number much lower than one which also indicates that there is a synergistic interaction, favorable synergistic interaction. Um, Okay, so uh, these are some um, pictures of um, mycobacterium smegmatis, as we call it. Uh, red color indicates dead cells, green color indicates live cells. So these, uh, comp uh, comp phyto these plant extracts seem to act on the cell wall damage, so thereby killing the cells. Okay, then we wanted to further go into the mechanism of action. So we looked at an enzyme called FTSZ. Uh, filamentous temperature sensitive mutant Z. This particular enzyme or protein is involved in cell division process. Okay, so what happens is the cell has to divide. As you know, bacteria uh, divides and multiplies. That's how bacteria happens. Okay, this particular enzyme is involved in that FTS is an enzyme. Okay, this is the structure of the enzyme. So what happens is um, it enzymes get attached to each other uh, head to tail and they form a ring uh, around the around the uh, bacteria and then it sort of pinches the cell, bacterial cell, and the cell starts dividing. Okay, so the FTS is an enzyme plays a very important role in cell division. And this picture explains very, very nicely. So the FTS is that what it does is it uh, forms this head to tail. Um, okay, slowly pinches those cells get divided. Into it. Okay, then the cells, that's how the division and multiplication of the cells take place. This happens in all bacterial systems, okay? So this FTSZ is found in all bacterial systems, including tuberculosis. So we wanted to know whether this FTSZ is, uh, uh, is being attacked by the phytochemicals so that uh, it prevents the cell division process. So if FTSZ doesn't um, do this job, uh, cells will get elongated, okay? That's called a protofilament. Cells get elongated. Um, so you will find long, long cells there because there is no division of cells. So cell division has to happen 
so that the cell multiplication and survival of cells happen. So if the cell division doesn't happen, cells get elongated. So we, we, we looked at elongated cells under microscope to see whether the FTSZ protein is getting affected by these plant extract. Okay, so these FTSZ protein is found in all bacterial systems, including this mycobacterium. And uh, if we can attack that, we can um, have elongated cells, thereby preventing cell division and thereby causing the cell death. <clears throat> so we started targeting this to see whether the, pla the plant extracts go and bind to the safety, as I said, and prevents this uh, cell division process. So these are some uh, transmission electron microscopic picture <clears throat> of uh, the uh, protofilament, as it's called, okay, when the cells form uh, this. <clears throat> this is called a protofilament and then it pinches the cells <clears throat> and the cells get divided. That's what happens actually. These are some transmission electron pictures um, without any uh, treatment. When we treat these cells with uh, some natural products, we call this is a structure, this is called scopilitin and this is called 7-dimethyl-4-methylcumarin. All these are natural products found quite a lot in fruits and nuts and so on actually. Coumarins uh, are, uh, are known to have very good um, activity, biochemical, bio, uh, biological activity, okay, many plant products have. So when we treat uh, uh, the FTSZ with these uh, uh, chemicals, you can see the uh, protofilament formation is completely destroyed. So the FTSZ is not able to form these uh, uh, protofilament, the cell division will not happen at all. Okay, uh, so when the cell division doesn't happen, as I said, the cells get elongated. You can see some pictures of this. Um, let me make it bigger, unfortunately. Uh, I hope you can see this. You can see the cell division uh, doesn't happen, so the cells get elongated. Um, we can see it under microscopic pictures here. So this elongated cells of uh, mycobacterium, uh, so thereby uh, we have uh, cell death happening actually. Whereas now the drug which I talked about, rifampicin or uh, um, isonicide, they look at cell membrane damage, they look at RNA synthesis and so on. Whereas these these plant extracts seem to have a different mode of activity. Okay, okay. So when uh, uh, look at uh, quantify those cell division length of cells uh, by treating with the different. Uh, these are the two drugs. So these untreated cells when you don't treat. Generally, the cells are about 3.9 micron long. When we treat with the isonicide or a little bit of cell division is prevented by them. But if you look at the plant extracts, look at this big number. Cells become very long, 15 microns, 13 microns, 12 microns. So the cell division is completely stopped. So the cell gets elongated, protofilament formation happens. So um, the uh, bacteria dies, mycobacterium smegmatis dies. That's what happens here. So these natural uh, plant extracts seem to have um, work not only through cell membrane damage because I showed you some cell membrane damage pictures also. Um, yeah, these are cell membrane damage. That means they damage the cell membrane and kill the bacteria, but also through um, increase uh, in the cell length. That means they prevent the cell division process, thereby achieve the uh, cell multiplication, uh, okay, cell division and multiplication. So, whereas the isonicide and rifampicin act through different mode of action. So, um, by combining these uh, natural product, natural plant extracts uh, with these commercial drugs, we are able to see extremely um, interesting synergistic interaction, which I showed you some pictures there, right? Yeah, these uh, very interesting pictures of uh, synergistic interaction. Uh, so, a natural product seem to act through the cell division process, uh, plant, whereas the um, isonicide, um, inhibits the formation of mycobacterial cell wall. Rifampicin acts by inhibiting and RNA synthesis, whereas the plant extracts seem to act through predominantly the, uh, inhibiting the cell division process by acting on this enzyme called FTSZ. So the cells get elongated, as we saw elongated cells, about 15 microns, 13 microns, and so on, and thereby uh, the, uh, the growth of the cells doesn't happen. And also, of course, they act through the cell wall damage also. So the plant extracts act through many different pathways. Uh, the chemical drugs um, act through certain fixed pathways. So we find a very interesting synergistic interaction. Okay, so um, we need to, of course, future, we need to look at more animal studies. 
Uh, we need to look at formulation. How do I combine a natural product or plant extract with the commercial drug together and give it as a dose, as a oral dose? So we need to look at it. Uh, we need to also look at something called pharm PK. PK is called pharmacokinetics. PD is called pharmacodynamics. That means uh, uh, the drug, when it enters the body, uh, the body starts acting on the drug. It gets degraded and finally gets excreted. Natural product also, when it enters the body, it gets uh, activated and um, acted upon by the enzymes present in the body. Then it gets degraded and excreted um, through urine and so on. So those effects, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics effects have to be looked at because the drug may have a different PKPD. The natural products may have different PKPD. So we need to look at uh, those PKPDs also because uh, <clears throat> if the drug remain, normally when the drug remains uh, longer in the body and do doctor may tell you, uh, take the drug once in 12 hours. If the drug remains shorter in the body, doctor may tell you, take it every four hours. So uh, the dosing strategies are defined by PKPD. So we need to look at how these drugs and the natural products have uh, PKPD, are they in tandem? So those future studies need to be looked at actually. Uh, so to conclude my talk, um, combination therapy, I look, we looked at drugs, um, plant extracts or phytochemicals or natural products. There seems to be a synergistic at certain concentration. So we are able to reduce the amount of drug two times, three times, four times. Um, so because they act at different pathways, uh, I showed you examples of mechanism in uh, uh, diabetes. I showed you me uh, mechanism in tuberculosis. They seem to act through different pathways. They have cytoprotective activity. They have reactive oxygen species uh, uh, inhibiting activity. They have radical scavenging activities. So they have many uh, beneficial activities. And when used in combination with drug, they may have better effect. But there are some issues with natural products. We need to understand that. Uh, biological variation from lot to lot of plants because uh, if I take it from one part and I take it from another part, um, part of India or even seasonal variations, concentrations of these pure compounds may be different. So we need to address that. Uh, time involved in identifying leaves. So um, although over the past 5,000 to 8,000 years, um, our people have been using a lot of natural um, extracts, we don't know the exact phytochemical pure compound um, which is involved in the activity or phytochemicals which are involved, that means many. So we need to um, find out what they are. We need to do uh, maybe column chromatography, um, uh, high pressure thin layer chromatography, LCMS, GCMS. So a lot of uh, work is involved. We need to have, as I mentioned, the pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamic of plant extracts, pure drugs. Uh, how the pure PKPD or pure drugs vary when I add PKPD? I need to know. Uh, stability of the extract, because um, we all know that uh, there are a lot of enzymes in the body, uh, in the GI system, whether uh, your um, system affects the plant compounds, we need to look at actually. Uh, of course, we need large quantities of these plant products. Normally, there are many big uh, industries which manufacture these uh, synthetic drugs, um, but we need to extract large number of uh, plant extracts. How do I organize that? So these issues we need to consider. So all these are issues which needs to be looked at and addressed if you are going to have therapies which combine drugs with plant extracts. So we may have formulations, we may have nanoparticles, we may have microparticles combining both drugs and plant extracts so that we get a good synergy. So we need to address all these actions. And finally, um, let me close down by thanking uh, my research scholars who were involved in this, uh, Dr. Prabhakar, Rakesh, Hema, Dr. Radhika, who worked quite a lot on uh, my microbial systems, tuberculosis system, um, diabetes systems. Okay, and finally, let me thank uh, both the Department of Science and Technology and Department of uh, Biotechnology for uh, uh, funding these uh, projects. Thank you very much um, for your time, and I hope uh, you enjoyed the talk. There are any questions? I'll be pleased to answer them. Um, so, uh, somebody asked about these, can we use these extracts in um, wastewater systems? Yes, uh, uh, there are some uh, studies where people are, yes, trying to look at the wastewater systems use of 
Um, of course, we need to look. Currently, chlorine is being used, chlorine dioxide, chlorine bleaching powder, all these are used. And then some adsorption systems are being used. Yes, one can look at the use. Um, in wastewater systems, cost is very important. Unlike your, your uh, drugs, where cost is not a big issue, actually. Uh, whether these uh, are hypothesized or theoretical assumptions or there is typical examples of this. Oh, synergistic, I, I just showed you. Um, maybe uh, you typed in before, um, but I just showed you. Uh, we look at the mechanism of action using um, um, <coughs> PCR, where look, we look at the gene <coughs> up regulations, we look at the gene down regulations, we, look, we also showed you a diabetic study with animal model where we are able to reduce the amount of uh, um, the commercial drug by almost a, fact, a factor of three. Okay, all these examples, I showed you live examples, experiments for the past 17, 18 years done by it. Um, so we have a lot of examples, in vitro studies, animal studies, gene studies, mechanistic studies, protein-based studies, so a lot of uh, experimental studies. Do you, have, do you identify particles using a molecular simulations no uh, no we don't identify through molecular simulations we look at uh, literature and um, identify and uh, for example for uh, diabetes we look at the uh, possible uh, compound plant extracts which have been used over the years for diabetes for uh, tuberculosis and microbial um, there is a lot of uh, literature available for uh, um, uh, disease pulmonary diseases tuberculosis so take we take from them and then start working on it any studies on the ability to counter side effects of the drugs using? Yes, um, the toxicity. Um, we have not done any experiment to look at uh, reduction in toxicity, but we look at. Um, we did look at uh, improvement in kidney function. Uh, we looked at uh, improvement in the liver function uh, when, uh, especially on diabetes rats, where we did that experiment. So the kidney functions are improved, especially um, when you look at uric acid and other kidney parameters and we look at the islet size we look at islet quality and thereby we are able to tell there is an improvement in the um, liver so we are able to look at that would you be able to um, yeah sure i will be able to give a copy of the ppt no problem ayurveda has latest um, uh, many herbs which have diaperic effect mainly yes ayurveda has a lot of uh, plants there are many um, ayurvedic ayush is also <clears throat> um, helping quite a lot there are many products in the market which are known for diabetes but uh, uh, the point which we are um, i am trying to address is we go through a systematic approach we identify the individual components we look at the mechanism of action we look at the gene so we are able to um, go into the way in which uh, the current drug di discovery strategy is based on. The current drug discovery strategy is based on looking at the target, um, looking at uh, the metabolites, um, looking at some animal studies. So we, we do go up to that level. But Ayurveda has large number of, uh, large number of uh, plants. So maybe uh, in future, many of the, uh, many of the researchers have, take each, have to take each one of them and make a detailed study. As I have reported here, we have to go right up to the gene and the protein level uh, so that uh, there is a complete validation of the study. And of course, we may have to go, we have to go into animal studies. Is these drugs additives and helpful in dialysis of... Uh, um, yes, uh, uh, yes, it's interesting point whether we can separate out isomer separation um, because uh, uh, here we are not talking about uh, additives the we are not talking about complex formation of the drug with the natural product we are talking each one of them acting individually on different pathway so um, we have never done complex formation at all we are not looking at complex but there are some uh, drug complexes where people are talking but in in this particular study we are talking about individual component um, individual that is drug and the phytochemical added together and treated okay so we are not uh, working on complex formation at all <clears throat> extracts of bitter gourd yes extracts of bitter gourd um, yes and jamun yes they are all reported um, for uh, diabetes um, but one needs to if one wants to be very thorough and scientific 
one needs to look at the active ingredients by doing a high pressure thin layer chromatography go into G uh, mass spectrometry and then maybe look at um, the individual uh, genes which get affected by the each one of these uh, pure plant phytochemicals so if one has to be thorough we need to do all this but um, yes uh, ayurveda and uh, Southeast medici uh, medicinal system has large number of uh, plant extracts reported for uh, diabetes. I agree with you. Um, the natural products uh, have to be isolated. No, um, like I showed in tuberculosis, we use the extracts rather than the individual components. Um, so extracts may be better because of uh, two reasons. One is um, each extract itself may be acting synergy. Um, you might not have a very large amount of uh, active ingredient, but there could be um, different ingredients in the plant, which may be uh, helping um, in the um, absorption, which may be helping in the protection, which may be helping in individual synergies also. So uh, in total plant extract is always better. Number one, number two, if you are going to isolate into 100% pure compound, um, you, um, then it may be as good as your synthetic uh, material. So it may lose some of its uh, in, innate or inbuilt advantages. Is there a temporal component to the synergies of antagonism? Yeah, an antagonism uh, also is possible at certain, comp um, we have seen that at certain concentrations, um, they may be toxic to the cells, and especially in diabetes we have seen. Um, at a certain concentrations, they may be toxic, which is antagonistic. Yes, we, so we need to look at the entire gamut of the range so that you do not end up with the antagonistic behavior. That means you need much higher concentration to achieve the same effect, number one, or you may lead into toxicities, issues also. That's possible. Especially if you are going, to, if the phytochemical is going to degrade your drug, then you may end up with the uh, need for higher concentration. Have these studies been done in vivo? Yes. Um, diabetes, we have done, I showed you in animal studies. We have done a, a two different uh, animal based studies for uh, different phytochemicals. Uh, for want of time, I have not shown. But um, other things we have not done. Tuberculosis, we have not done uh, animal studies. Um, what other pathways are there plant at? Okay, then uh, for example, if you look at diabetes, um, they and the, you also have um, alpha glycosidase enzymes are there. Okay, so that could be one other pathway. So we can look at different pathways um, and see how these uh, components. And if you look at tuberculosis, um, cell wall damage, uh, we looked at uh, the uh, cell division process. Um, there could be uh, DNA damage. Uh, there could be seven, eight different pathways for microorganisms, so we can look at different pathways. Have these tests been done on human? No. Um, animal studies? No, not not on human. Phytochemicals are more part of Indian. Yeah, the, con the Indian cooking systems are there, but the concentrations may be less. Here I'm talking about micro mole, and um, Indian co cooking system might be almost a thousand times less, number one. Um, number two, again, um, high temperature, whether there is a degradation, what is the active ingredient that's going in, maybe much lesser. Okay. And of course, uh, and diabetes is multifactorial, so I do not want to... Um, talk much about it. Lifestyle disease, it's called. So many factors has come in. <coughs> so I do not want to spend uh, much on that. Okay, I do know. And there are many, many uh, now companies which are working because Ayush is spending um, a lot of uh, funding on this. So there are um, many startups which are working on this. Um, especially on natural product. Many companies are there. I could, if you send me an email, I could uh, reply to you. Can one reconcile the procedures? Treatments are really complex Ayurvedic medicine recipe. Oh yeah, complex systems, one need to, if you want to be very um, 
systematic and thorough. Uh, we need to take one complex Ayurvedic product and go through the entire process. I think Ayush has started doing that. Ayush is profiling, um, is spending a lot of money on profiling our uh, uh, Indian um, phytochemicals. Profiling means doing LCMS separation with different solvents and doing LCMS. Um, identifying that even a database of 10,000 plant extracts uh, containing say 200 or 300 uh, um, individual components if you have that database that itself is very good um, I think Ayush has started that but that's uh, we should have done that uh, many years back but that's going to happen slowly so we need that huge database of all the plants with their individual uh, maybe 200 phytochemicals plus and so we need that, that information, which may be useful for the forthcoming researchers, especially in natural products. Okay. Uh, how are these extracts made? Water extracts, we first do hexane to remove uh, the fat, and then we use, um, okay, um, we call it um, aqueous alcoholic extract. Then we can have ethyl acetate fractions. So that is there. Okay, thank you. Very then can you get the same extracted release effects using these plant products in conjunction with drugs? So I have not looked at. Um, I have shown you whatever uh, um, pathways we have looked at. So I have not looked at the regulation at all, actually. But one can look at yes, and uh, the, the field is open. One can look at uh, mechanism. Uh, one can look at how um, plant extracts alone and um, drugs alone affect various pathways and in combination and individually also, yes. Um, what is the success rate of such a combination therapy? Currently, there are no combination therapies using phytochemicals. Uh, drugs, drugs are use, used together, but they are not used as synergy. They are used together for addressing two different things. Okay, for example, uh, cardiovascular, um, they give beta blockers and AS inhibitors. So both are different. It's not a synergist they are talking about. But currently, there are no products which talk about drug phytochemical combination. So currently, there are no products. Um, so, um, chemical, these animal microbiological actions are very really unique for me. The option is you mentioned about cell division and micron development. These cells are complex in nature. The individual cells. Yeah, individual cells. Yeah, individual cells. Um, Yeah, I will not be able to comment on the treatment for COVID-19. Um, like um, I said, uh, we have results over the past 5,000 to 10,000 years on plant extract. But systematic um, study which has been done for the medic medicinal drugs has not been done. And I think uh, we should be doing it. And if there are researchers interested, they should pursue that. Okay, that's very, very important actually because uh, uh, there are almost uh, 10,000 plants which have been known to have biological uh, useful activities, but we do not know the mechanism. We do not know the active ingredient. So we need to do that. Okay. Which is better use of purely natural. Uh, combination plant extract are always better than the individual uh, phytochemicals. And um, here I'm talking about combination, so that way it doesn't affect uh, um, the uh, drug, use of drugs alone, use of phytochemicals alone. Generally, as of today, phytochemicals are used as a complementary, as a supplement, and so on. But here I am saying that uh, it can also have uh, medicinal benefits like a commercial drug. That's what I'm trying to tell, actually. Uh, when you man manufacture phytochemicals synthetically, then it becomes like a commercial drug. Like Taxol, if I am going to manufacture, then it's a commercial. Aspirin, for example, which all of us use, came from a plant. So if you are going to manufacture commercially, then we lose all the uh, advantages of that being used as a um, combination therapy drug versus um, plant extract. Can we have the... Uh, comp Yes, yes, definitely. Um, but the concentrations will be del so dry, plant, food uh, is not going to treat you as fast 
as quickly as a drug. So please remember that. So it's a long-term slow effect. But if you are going to talk about a drug and purify a chemical, then that is a treatment that's a fast acting. So, but if you are going to have good diet, somebody has mentioned good diet and fruits. Yes, that's a long-term beneficial effect. Yes, definitely one should think about it. Um, prevention. But if you are looking at fast acting, then of course you are giving a high concentration, high dose of a drug uh, in combination. Yeah, yes, with the with PCR, we, we are looking at uh, combinations helping the um, particular gene when, when talking about individual, yes. Can this study be made with the homeopathic drugs? In yeah, definitely. I think uh, we need to, um, the Western world does not still accept uh, the natural products, uh, our Ayurveda, Unani, and other many things because we do not have systematic data at all. Yes, they have benefited, but we do not have the systematic data. So when youngsters that are in this uh, audience should think in that direction, get systematic data, that means looking at the active ingredient, uh, looking at pure compound, looking at which genes they affect, which proteins they're looking, looking at metabolomics, um, doing doing a gene study, uh, maybe then go up to animal study. That needs to be done so that there is no um, questions being asked. No, in IATM, even animal studies as of now, we do not have. So forget about human studies. Um, can the field of machine learning be yes yes we can um, use but um, looking at many properties many molecules i don't know how it is but somebody who is an expert in that yes can we can look at it machine learning have we done any research on uh, guinea goa no we have not done on goa um, jamun plum is known for diabetes yes but we, i have not done can jamun yes yes sir we know Uh, because rats um, are used because they have a certain genomics similar to human. Okay, that's why they are used actually. How normal people combine plant extracts and drugs? Yes, so um, as I said, how do I combine your yeah, metformin with say uh, chlorogenic acid and make a capsule um, and then uh, give it to your patient and both should have a same GI absorption. GI absorption means through my stomach both should have same pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics. So somebody has to do that and do that sort of testing. Yes, that needs to be done. Thank you. Oh, normal people. Yeah, so um, that pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamics, uh, like I said, needs to be looked at when I combine uh, drugs with phytochemicals. I think that needs to be really looked at um, by future researchers, actually. Okay. So I think uh, there's uh, something. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation. I hope uh, it uh, interested some youngsters in the audience um, who may be interested to look at uh, phytochemicals, plant extracts, um, do a systematic study and how they can partly replace drugs. So it is easy to say that uh, we will partly replace drugs with phytochemicals rather than saying fully replace drugs with phytochemicals. Okay, so many things which I talked about, formulations, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, stability in the stomach, um, all these needs to be looked at, then animal studies, all these needs to be looked at before uh, we really use them as uh, um, drugs. And there is a lot of resistance, a lot of inhibition, a lot of doubts that are there in the pharmaceutical industry of use of uh, plant products because we still lack this data. And I hope... Um, we will be able to collect these data in the next uh, five to ten years with funding maybe from Ayush and so on. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, we will break now. Thank you. Uh, professor? Professor? Yeah? Uh, one more question is there in the question column actually. One yeah, sure. Imagine. Uh, what facilities are required to take this forward in IADM? So, uh, number one, uh, we need to have formulation development and then uh, Main thing is uh, looking at animal studies. So we need animal studies. Um, uh, we need to look at pharmacokinetics. 
pharmacodynamics. We need to look at how the concentration of the drug and um, the phytochemical are able to travel um, into the body. So those facilities are required. And of course, we need good uh, metabolomics type of facility to look at the metabolites, um, monitor the metabolites in treatment with the drugs alone, with phytochemicals alone together. So these are the facilities. Uh, I feel. And of course, uh, we are looking at only a few genes because I showed you four genes, five genes, ten genes. But we, if you want to look at hundreds of genes, so some sort of a, uh, array system which can look at hundreds, thousands of genes um, with drugs, with phyt phytochemicals, combinations. So these are the facilities that are required um, to take this uh, further action. And of course, um, in addition, we need to really profile the phytochemical, the plant extract, where I said some time back, uh, high pressure TLCs, um, LC, MS, MS, good library, GC, MS, MS. Library means uh, database libraries, then uh, good GC, MS, um, and some proteomics facility. All these are required if, for the plant side of it. Okay. Uh, what facilities? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.